Hello and a warm welcome to Federal Special Program Capital Beat. BJP and Biju Janata Dal in Odisha are trying to forge an alliance for the assembly polls as well as Lok Sabha elections. Now, there have been reports that uh, uh, a round of meeting has happened between uh, Naveen Patnaik's uh, emissary, VK Pandyan and Pranav Das and the BJP leaders, but there are reports that the talks have remained inconclusive, but we still do not know whether the alliance is happening or not happening. But uh, Manmohan Samal, who's the BJD state president of BJP, he has gone on record and said that uh, there is no alliance on the table. BJP will contest alone. That is what the state BJP president has said. But are we to believe the BJP president, the state president, I mean, is this uh, remarriage of convenience happening uh, for 2024 between BJP and BJ BJD? Joining me now is Ruben Banerjee, who's a very senior journalist uh, and an author as well from Odisha. Thank you so much, uh, Ruben, for joining. And I can also say Rajesh Mahapatra, again, a very senior journalist, political commentator and author. Uh, Rajesh, uh, thank you so much for joining. You're still connecting with the audio. Uh, and if you can hear us, uh, yeah, so we'll wait for uh, Rajesh uh, to join. But in the meanwhile, I'll go to Ruben Banerjee. Ruben, uh, is this alliance actually Hi. happening between BJD and BJP? Well, uh, as we speak, the alliance is still on the table and talks have been happening. There are a few uh, small niggles here and there, uh, seat sharing, like which seat goes to whom, whether BJP or BJD should contest from Puri or... There are a couple of seats, but the larger, um, see these small little uh, differences that they have over who contests from where and how many seats for whom. See, in a larger scheme of things, these are small little slight niggles. Uh, I think the bigger decision that needs to be taken is like whether BJP actually goes for BJD, uh, uh, forges an alliance with the Biju Janta Dal. And that's a larger question like... Uh, as of now, as we talk, uh, the decision is yes, but we must also be very mindful that there has been... Yes, this, yes. Go ahead. Go this, ahead. Hasn't, this hasn't really gone down well uh, in Orissa uh, at the ground level. At the uh, uh, ground level, party workers, both BJP, BJP and BJD are pretty unhappy about it. Right. Uh, so obviously the central party, uh, the uh, top leadership of both the parties are taking... Uh, kind of uh, studying what the responses have been like. But as we talk, yes, there are some niggles here and there, uh, but talks are underway. Uh, mm. To my knowledge, uh, talks have progressed. There has been certain, certainly fair degree of unanimity about uh, many, many seats. Uh, mm -hmm. There are differences still, differences that remain to be ironed. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, there is still a slip between the cup and the leap. And uh, both, both I think primarily it's the BJP central leadership, which is still uh, trying to last minute, like uh, figure out like whether they should go for this or not. I think uh, the ball is clearly in the Bharati Janta Party's court. But Ruben, uh, why is there a confusion? Because uh, Manmohan Samal, who's the state BJP president, he has gone on record, he has spoken to the press reporters, and he has said that there is no alliance on the table. And he's saying that we've decided to go alone. So why is Manmohan Samal uh, speaking in a totally yeah, different we, voice? To, to understand this, why this alliance and why the confusion, why uh, people are speaking up in different voices, mm. uh, we must understand who is driving this initiative, like to bring... BJP and BJD together. And we also need to understand who benefits and how. Okay. So if you allow me two minutes, I'll try and explain and put everything in a context. Yes. Now, why is BJP interested in this? BJP is interested in the central leadership because this alliance thing is being driven purely by majorly by the central leadership of the Bharatiya Janta Party. And they are interested to bring back uh, Biju Janta Dal and Navin Patnaik into their NDA fold because uh, in the run-up to the next general parliamentary elections, it sends a very powerful message across the country. And uh, they believe, the party leadership uh, in Delhi believes, uh, that it will give uh, further momentum to their uh, drive of charts so far, 400 plus. Hmm. But as I said a little while ago, uh, 
this move has not really been welcomed in the state in Orissa. Both BJP and BJD workers are pretty unhappy. Even the state leadership of the BJP is resisting it, uh, even now as I talk. So while the central leadership is talking, engaging with the Biju Janda Dal, there are enough number of people within the party, particularly in the state, who are resisting this initiative. Now, who gains and why? So as I said, BJP gains in terms of perception. The central leadership is interested in this, uh, that uh, it sends out a very strong message uh, that the NDA earlier, the entire flock is coming together. Now in Orissa, who gains? BJD loses because uh, BJD was the, uh, the conventional wisdom is that Biju Janta Dal should be losing out. Uh, because why should they? Because in any case, Navin Patnaik still remains uh, by far the most uh, popular leader in the state. And nobody doubts that he will not be re-elected when assembly elections are held together alongside uh, parliamentary elections. He might, his tally might slip a little bit from 170 in the last time, 2019. The Biju Janta Dal's tally might come down to 80 or 90, but he still gets re-elected for the sixth term. So yeah. why should BJD, Biju Janta Dal get into this? Right. So my explanation and what my understanding is, and I've been, see, I follow Odisha politics very key, keenly. I'm very interested in it. And I've been sniffing around and I've been talking to my sources, very senior party sources. Uh, my understanding is while the central party leadership of the Bharati Janta Party is driving it, in Odisha, it is being driven by K.V. Pandian, Kartik oh. Pandian. Right. Okay. And okay. why is he doing right. it? Why is it? Just allow me another one minute and then I'll wrap up. Why is he doing it? Because this goes against the conventional wisdom because people think that if BJD and BJP gets together in a couple of years, the Bharati Janta Party being the, the bigger part, uh, uh, more powerful party will swallow uh, Biju Janta right. the regional right. party. Right. But I'm given to understand that Mr. Pandian has taken a short term view and there are primarily two reasons for this, for getting into an alliance with BJP. See, he is the presumptive successor to Navin Patnaik. But he has been facing a bit of resistance and backlash because he's a non-ODI, he's an outsider. He's a Tamilian by birth. Mm -hmm. He has been living in Odisha only for the last couple of years, 10, 10 years, 20 years since he became an IS officer. So there he was facing headwind and there has been a lot of opposition. And he, his attempt to become Navin Patnaik's successor will uh, face rough weather if Bharati Janta Party stays an, as an opposition in Odisha because right. Bharati Janta right. Party is a strong opponent. Another, right. Just another 30 seconds. Oh, no, I, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll come back to you. Ruben, I'll come back to you. But let me also get in uh, uh, on, on that question. We'll come later. But I want to get in Rajesh Mahapatra now. Rajesh, uh, what, are, what, what are your sources uh, really telling you? That is this uh, remarriage of convenience happening between BJP and BJD or not? Because uh, the state BJP president is talking in a different tone altogether. He says that there is no alliance on the table. We will go alone. But uh, there have been several reports saying that, yes, there is an alliance which is possibly happening and uh, Naveen Patnaik might, might also join NDA to that extent. So what are your sources uh, telling you? I don't track politics of Orissa uh, in today's time as closely as Ruben does, uh, nor do I have uh, uh, sources that I can say uh, can really be informed because I think there are a very few people who are privy to uh, knowing what's going on uh, and what direction it will take. But uh, once I'm sitting in Delhi and having known Odisha a little better than several others who uh, also track politics of Odisha, what I can say is that the statement coming out of the local BJP leaders yesterday, I would take it more as posturing. Uh, I think it would be difficult for either party to get out of what they had set out to do, which is to come together. Uh, and I think this is not something that has happened overnight. This has been in the works for nearly a year. Uh, and uh, in this one year, a lot of things are kind of slowly making their way uh, at one level within BJD, as Ruben said, there is a kind of uh, succession uh, plan uh, getting into place where Mr. Pandian has uh, 
resign uh, from being a bureaucrat and uh, finally uh, put on the hat of a politician uh, so he can now legitimately stake a claim um, uh, to to you know uh, what he aspires to have in Odisha politics, which is he kind of fashions himself as the successor of Navin Patnaik. And I think at some point uh, level, Navin Patnaik has also reconciled to the fact that if it's going to be Pandian, let it be. But, you know, so long as I'm here, I'm, I'm the one and Pandian is number two. And effectively, everybody knows that Pandian is the person who runs the state, who runs the government, who runs the party. Um, uh, and as far as BJP is concerned, uh, this whole development kind of uh, 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 ha has forced the whole uh, the dynamics of the state unit to realign itself now to the imperatives of the central leadership and the interests of the central leadership, which is very short term and immediate is to garner as many Lok Sabha seats as it can from Odisha in the 2024 elections. And that is the reason why BJP is keen on forcing a partnership, a formal partnership before the elections. Hmm. Uh, for A partnership would have happened after the election was a foregone conclusion several months ago. What we are seeing, no, this partnership cannot wait until the elections are over. It, the partnership has to happen now. That is something I think the central leadership of BJP is very, very convinced about. And as Ruben said, it is part of their uh, game plan to bring more credentials to this Char so par uh, slogan. So that's where we stand. So most likely a bit of posturing here, a bit of posturing there, a bit of bargain here, a bit of bargain there. Uh, what I'm getting to hear is that initially the BJD had put on table 37 MLA seats for BJP uh, and uh, about 12 seats uh, in uh, empty seats for uh, BJP. Uh, but the BJP is insisting that it should get 14 seats uh, in the Lok Sabha out of 21. And it had won last time eight seats. Uh, and BJD should limit itself to seven seats. BJ, BJD currently has 12 MPs from the state. So which means BJ, BJ, BJD will have to forego uh, about uh, five seats. Uh, and uh, 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 BJP wants to contest at least 50 MLA seats. What I'm hearing now is that there is, they are both sides are veering towards about 43 to 44 seats for BJP, uh, as far as the uh, assembly elections are concerned, and maybe 13 seats uh, in the Lok Sabha. Right. And, and as Ruben very rightly said, I think there is also a lot of discussion on the seats, because please remember, there are, uh, it's not a question of, you know, who, con who contests from where is very critical, uh, just to give you an example, Bhubaneswar, which is a prestige seat and is represented by one of the most uh, prominent faces of the state BJP, which is Aparajita Sadangi, who also uh, aspires to be a chief ministerial candidate at, in some day. Now, I'm pretty sure BJD would like to, and if Pandian has his way, and it is open secret that... Uh, uh, Pandian and Aparajita sworn enemies. Uh, now, Aparajita cannot win any other seat other than Bhubaneswar. What happens if Bhubaneswar goes to BJD? Uh, how will they reconcile that in BJP? So right. I think there is also see a serious risk of a lot of internal rebellion and uh, uh, disenchantment uh, and resentment about who are the people who would lose out? Because on both sides, there are quite a few strong men and women right. who stand to lose out. And Absolutely. that has its repercussions. I think both sides are also trying to weigh in over that. Hmm. So that exactly is the reason why there is uh, uh, whatever tussle we are seeing. But I'll come to the question of uh, why Naveen Patnaik is wanting to enter into some kind of an alliance. And Ruben, to you, uh, you were saying that, of course, uh, VK Pandyan has, uh, has taken over the reins of BJD. 
BJP's uh, ambition is very, very clear that they want to, you know, fulfill their uh, slogan of Char Sopar and four, they'll cross 400 seats. So they're eyeing at Orissa. Now, what is the compulsion of Naveen Patnaik? Why should he enter into an alliance with a party uh, with uh, which it broke off in 2009 for very, very strong reasons? Well, the conventional wisdom is uh, such an alliance bringing, inviting Biju uh, Bharati Janta Party into Orissa, in, into an alliance with Biju Janta Dal, should be detrimental to Naveen Patnaik and Biju Janta Dal. Hmm. But as I was trying to explain to you, this has been driven primarily from the Biju Janta Dal side by Mr. Pandian. And why? Now, that's something very interesting. Why? Because Mr. Pandian is trying to tame the principal opposition in the state. See, there is another opposition in the state. That is Congress, which is emasculated, weakened, doesn't have really much of firepower. The stronger opposition, obviously, and is the principal opposition is Bharatiya Janata Party. Now, in trying to position himself and market himself as a successor to Naveen Patnaik, Mr. Pandian has been facing some rough weather because there is definitely at the ground level a certain kind of backlash that he is seen as an outsider. And let me tell you, despite his best attempts, uh, I don't think on, among the masses he is very, very popular. People mm -hmm. are silent for the time being now because they can't do much because he, Pandian, it is Pandian who controls both the government and the levers of the party. So by taming uh, Biju, uh, Bharati Janta Party, and if he can bring them to their side, okay, despite the resistance from within the state BJP, the BJP is silenced. Like they won't be able to challenge uh, Mr. Pandian for being an outsider. Mm -hmm. Number two, this is one primary reason because so he has a short term objective, Mr. Pandian, that he wants to silence and tame the principal opposition party who can make things tough for him. Number two, given if there is an election now, Navin Patnaik, as I said, obviously will get re-elected, but possibly he will end up getting 80 seats. And that is what uh, the general estimate is, because his popularity has also uh, kind of been yeah. declining. Uh, from 78%, it is currently down to 52%. So he will possibly, his Biju Janta Dal will end up getting 80. But very interestingly, then in that case, BJP, which last time got 22 or 23, will end up getting 45 or 50. Hmm. So with BJP, uh, Biju, Bharati Janta Party getting 50 assembly seats, imagine the kind of, the dig, how emboldened they will feel. Hmm. Okay, and they can really come after Mr. Pandian, one, make his life miserable for being an outsider. Number two, they can even, like, they will be within striking distance. They can uh, destabilize the government, like right. it's Bharati Janta Party. So, the Bharati, though right. Nabin Patnai gets re-elected, Right. Maybe it won't be as smooth a passage for him or Mr. Pandian if he decides to take over at some point of time. It right. will not be smooth passage for either Mr. Pandian or Mr. Navin Patnaik. Okay. So, so he is trying to kill Mr. Pandian, is trying to kill two birds in one stroke, though according to conventional wisdom, it's detri detrimental to the Biju Janta Dal, but it might be suitable for some particular leaders like Mr. Pandya and Mr. Navin Patnaik. Okay, Rajesh wanted to make a point. You were raising your hand. Yes, Rajesh? I was just trying to second what uh, 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 Ruben was saying. Uh, and this is even before, I mean, in the current assembly where Navin Patnaik has got 112 MLAs uh, and Ruben would agree with me, more than a third of them are already in BJP's pocket. Hmm. You know, they can be on that side at any given point in time. BJP, if it's there in power at the center uh, and wants to steal away 30, 40 MLAs, it's, it's going to be a cakewalk literally for BJP. Right. And that's a real danger. Uh, so, uh, uh, as Ruben said, so my gut feel is, Naveen Patnaik, why you asked why Naveen is also keen on the alliance. I think, despite everything, I think he had his intelligence that he may not win as many seats as he won last time. Right. Although this, uh, he would have wanted to max it this time, he won't get as many seats. And also at the same time, there is also this danger that if he kind of... Uh, is not able to limit the number of MLA seats that they give to BJP, then BJP will be in a striking range after they come to power in the center to topple the government at any point in time. Absolutely. So, so, so therefore, what you are going to see, 
and this is where mr pandian comes in because he is is the guy who is probably going to be you know doing all the mathematics my own sense is the bjd will not mind giving away one or two lok sabha seats extra but will really bargain hard to keep bjp you know somewhere around 40 so the expectation would be they win finally somewhere between 33 to 35 seats and therefore you know uh, uh do not become a threat uh, in no, any rajesh cases. rajesh from what you're saying uh, is it not true then if uh, bjd enters into an alliance with bjp and as what bjd leaders have also been saying that uh, it it will almost be suicidal then you are trying to finish the existence of the party and they all very well know that if you allow bjp yeah so uh, it's very simple if if this alliance happens uh who is going to be the biggest gainer without doubt it's bjp, BJP. yeah who is going to be the biggest loser i don't think i would say bjd bjd will be a loser because it's the end of the road for bjd you know if not today uh in a few years time uh bjd okay. will uh cease to be a relevant force hmm. uh but the biggest loser i would say are the people of odisha right because you know these two parties together won nearly 70% votes and if they are able to retain that 70% votes and win about 95% seats there is no opposition in the state Absolutely. Moreover, all those people who voted for BJP because they were opposed to BJD today feel betrayed, and in the same way, many people who continue to vote for BJD in order to keep BJP away from the state feel betrayed. So right. you know the the real betrayal betrayal is with the people of Odisha. Right. Having right. said that, I think there is also a gain uh, because. Uh, you know i think of it what would have happened if mm-hmm. there was no alliance bjd would have come to power tomorrow okay there would have been a wait for bjp but bjp would have gained strength as a principal opposition and would have come uh, to be be a claimant to power at some later point in time yeah. so in other words the people of odisha would have had to bear with bjd bjp for probably the next 10 years right look at what has happened if this alliance is going through there is a significant proportion of odisha's population which really would not want to go with this alliance because it will be seen Absolutely. as a bjp alliance right but for them there is no opposition that they can look up to right. and that there there is it is a sad state of affairs that today congress is in such a decimated state that it cannot cash in on this opportunity one quick but... question rajesh to you uh, regarding congress and then i'll come for the concluding comments to ruben banerji uh, rajesh congress has been saying at least you know uh, in, in the media circles that it is trying to revive the party in odisha with ajoy kumar uh, you know taking a lead role over there he's meeting people at the block level at least that's what he's coming back to delhi and telling the people this is what the perception is so how much of a chance does congress really have in the odisha landscape no you 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 may, no matter how much you say that you are trying to revive uh, congress in odisha uh, the question should be are you able to revive or are you reviving i don't think there is uh, i mean i think congress uh, uh, is clueless about odisha okay uh, and i don't think congress is paying uh, the kind of attention you should be paying to the state because this state actually is a low hanging fruit for congress Right. it has always been for the last 10 years and congress has kept squandering opportunity after opportunity and i am not sure how they are uh, going to be doing this uh, see i mean this is there is a great opportunity because as i said from both sides uh, there will be a lot of rebels there will be a lot of dissenters right by now you should be expecting congress to have opened up a channel of communication with these people absolutely but but i i i would be surprised if congress has no informed assessment and when i say congress the central leadership in uh, uh, in delhi i i am i won't be surprised if they don't they don't even have an assessment of who these people are in fact if you tell the names i don't think uh, even people in congress who are uh, in charge of uh, odisha even they would know 
Right. You know, there are there. Are, you know, I I I can bet on it that the many strong men and women who are going to be eased out if this alliance comes into force, uh, many people in Congress would be even aware of them. Right. So it's a, it's a sad state. Having said that, there is an opportunity, but I see that opportunity playing out in a different way. I think Odisha's politics has always had a regional aspiration. Even though name the name was Janata Dal, Janata Dal was always seen as a regional party of Biju Patnaik. Okay, and the Bharat Biju Janata Dal is a regional party. If Biju Janata Dal is giving into BJP, there is a space for a regional narrative, a regional party to come up. So it may not happen now, but in due course of time, you might see the emergence of a new or a realigned regional outfit. Right. Absolutely, and if Congress is smart enough, it should be exploring uh, the possibility of such a regional outfit and should work with them. Right. Okay. So, Ruben, coming to you now for the conclude, concluding comments at Odisha political landscape in 2024. What does it really bring on the table? It brings up uncertainties. It brings up uh, uh, certain good tidings. You know, uh, how would you really see that? Whether we do not know whether this alliance is going to happen or not. Of course, the talks are in process, as you said. But uh, where is this all heading to for the people in Orisha? You'll have to unmute. Ruben, you'll have to unmute. Yes. Well, I agree with Raj uh, uh, Rajesh uh, that people of Orisha, by and large, has been shortchanged by both the BJP and BJD uh, by going into getting into this kind of an alliance, uh, despite having pretended all these years that they are opposed to each other last 15 years uh, but then the point is the alliance is as i said the alliance the talk is going ahead the final call obviously rests with the center bjp leaderships a center leadership not the state leadership the state leadership a lot of people are against this move but the central leadership having set sights on its 400 uh, charts so far whatever finally the call they'll have to take as of now as we talk yes they are going ahead with it despite a few niggles here and there and in terms of Orissa, from Biju Janta Dal, Mr. V.K. Pandian and Navin Patnaik are very keen on it. They have taken, as I explained, they have taken a short-term view of this. In the long term, of course, we all realize that it will be suicidal for Biju Janta Dal, BJP at some point or the other will swallow them up. But for the next two years, three years, they think, Mr. Pandian and Mr. Patnaik believes that if they can tame BJP as an opposition party, silence them, have them on their side, at least next two, three years, it will be smooth. Yes. Yeah. All right. So we'll have to wait and watch as to what happens in Orisha. But as of now, it looks like that the BJD and BJP talks are on. But can they arrive at a consensus and a respectable one? We'll have to wait and watch. Thank you so much, Rajesh Mahapatra and Ruben Banerjee for joining the debate. And one appeal to the viewers who are watching this discussion, subscribe to our channel, send us your feedback and stay tuned to the federal. Thank you. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.